Hey y'all, we've made it to the last week of the college football season and Tennessee is 9-2, only one win away from getting to the college football playoffs, but one little problem, one little problem, one thing is standing in our way and it's those nerds from Vanderbilt. <laughs> but anyway, we got to win this game. Tennessee is favored in this game. We'll get a little bit more into that. Uh, Tennessee should win this game, but... Vanderbilt is a formidable opponent. They're playing this week in Nashville, Tennessee, this Saturday at 12 o'clock. Uh, it's early kickoff, uh, and I hope t I, I'm kind of glad it's early because I hope Tennessee wins and I can enjoy the rest of my Saturday. I don't have to worry about this game the rest of the day. But anyway, let's talk about these two teams. Both teams have played 11 games. Uh, Vanderbilt is six and five. Uh, they played the ninth hardest schedule. Tough, tough schedule. They played Texas, Alabama. Uh, they went to Missouri. Uh, they have played South Carolina. They've just they played a tough, a bunch of tough teams. They played LSU last week. Played LSU last week. Lost twenty four to seventeen in a game they easily could have won. Uh, Tennessee is nine and two. They played the twenty second hardest schedule uh, and beat UTEP last week fifty six to nothing. Tennessee did not score any points in the first quarter though. Uh, did not look good. They got it figured out. But we got to put a whole game together this week. Tennessee is favored by 10.5 points. Uh, that's went down a little bit because Tennessee was favored by 11 earlier in the week, but it's went down to 10.5 as of today. Players to watch in this game, Nico Iamaliava, 1,255 pass yards, 15 TDs. He is playing better. He's taking care of the ball a little bit more, but he's still inconsistent at times. Need him to be better. For Vanderbilt, Diego Pavia, 2,229 pass yards, but here's the big thing, 671 rushing yards. He is a one-man show for Vanderbilt. He is their leading rusher, he's their playmaker, and he can, if you don't stay in your rush lanes, our defenders, he can make big plays with his legs. He's great at throwing the long ball. Uh, he's a great, great football player. Uh, and he has, a, he has a ton of experience, and he could definitely beat Tennessee uh, if we don't play well this week. For Tennessee, Dylan Sampson, 1,307 rush yards, 22 TDs. He's only 60 yards away from having over 1,500 total yard, uh, total all-purpose yards this season. That was a thing that I said – I thought he could do, and it was a lofty goal. I didn't. I, I was like, man, when I made that prediction that he could get to 1,500 all-purpose yards, I said, Philip, you're, you're kind of reaching there. But no, he's going to do it more unless he gets hurt this week, I think. So he should be there. Uh, for uh, Vanderbilt, Eli Stowers, 568 receiving yards, four TDs. He's their best receiver leading uh, – He's their, their leading receiver this year uh, at the tight end position. Uh, James Pierce for Tennessee, he's really coming on. 34 tackles, seven and a half sacks. He had two sacks last week, um, so he's playing really good football. Brian Longwell for Vanderbilt, 69 tackles. Uh, and he uh, he is their leading tackler. He's from Nashville, Tennessee. So, uh, you know, he wants to beat the Vols. You know that. So let's talk about the Tennessee offense versus the Vanderbilt defense. Total offense for Tennessee 11th, 456 yards per game. Total defense for Vanderbilt 61st, 360 yards per game allowed. Scoring offense for Tennessee 12th, 37 points per game. Scoring defense for Vanderbilt 40th, 22 points per game. Uh, that's pretty darn good, pretty solid from Vanderbilt, especially with the schedule that they've played. Rushing offense for Tennessee 9th. 228 yards per game and a lot of those stats from Tennessee is just the resent just the, the, the constant running the constant barrage uh, because we are a predominant uh, rushing team but our offensive line needs to block better uh, a lot of these yards are just the will and the the just the testament of Dylan Sampson uh, and and our running backs just running really hard and running through tackles because they're they're hit pretty darn early there are a lot of times hit at the line of scrimmage and we're just making yards so uh, better we need better blocking from our offensive line rush defense for Vanderbilt 36 124 yards per game is what they're allowing pretty good rush defense so that's It'll be a good battle there to see if Tennessee can uh, uh, run on that Vanderbilt front seven. Pass offense for Tennessee, 64th. 
229 yards per game. And this is a unit that's kind of getting worse and worse and worse as the year goes on. Um, struggled at times. A lot of that is Nico's inconsistency. A lot of time, and earlier in the year, it was offensive line that was not protecting him. And now, a lot of it is receivers dropping the football. So, we need to put it together in this game. Passing defense for Vanderbilt, 95th, 237 yards per game. So that's real sore spot for Vanderbilt. That's one thing that maybe Tennessee can take advantage of with our receivers. So we'll see what happens there. Tennessee defense versus the Vanderbilt offense. Tennessee's total defense is sixth in the country, allowing 284 yards per game. Total offense for Vanderbilt, 116, 329 yards per game. That's the thing about this Vanderbilt offense. Um, they've done just enough to win a lot of ball games. Uh, there's nothing gaudy about their statistics on the offensive side of the ball, but they, you know, a lot of these games they've done just enough uh, with Diego Pavia at quarterback and uh, and moving the ball up and down the field. So, uh, scoring defense for Tennessee, fourth, only allowing 13 point. Uh, yeah, only 13 points per game this year. Um, done really good. It's been a really good, solid year uh, on the defensive side of the ball for Tennessee. Scoring offense for Vanderbilt, 77th, 27 points per game is what Vanderbilt is averaging. Rush defense for Tennessee, 6th, 99 yards per game allowed, you know. Uh, kind of, we took this step this year, uh, another step. We were really good last year in the rush defense, and this year we took another step. And we're a top 10 unit this year. So the front seven's done a great job, especially with Keenan Peely going down. Uh, linebackers have stepped up and played well uh, in the rush defense. Rush offense for Vanderbilt, 85th, 142 yards per game. Uh, pass defense for Tennessee, 26th, 186 yards per game. A unit, you know, I get on here and say this every week, but they've done really, really well. Uh, the, the guys back there, in the, uh, you know, uh, McCoy, Gibson, those guys have done a phenomenal job coming in and, and getting the job done back there in the secondary. Pass offense for Vanderbilt, 108th, 187 yards per game. So, Tennessee can get these guys in, in long-distance situations. I think Vanderbilt's going to be in big, big trouble. Okay, let's get the turnover margin. Tennessee, 30th, plus 6 in turnover margin. Vanderbilt, same, 30th, plus 6. So both teams are pretty opportunistic, not making a ton of turnovers. Um, so... It'll be see. It'll be interesting to see who has the, who has the edge in this game. Uh, that's the reason that Vanderbilt has picked up six wins this year. They are not beating themselves. So now let's get to the pr the prediction in this game. Okay. First and foremost, I want to be clear. This is going to be a war. Okay. Um, this is going to be a game that is going to be a like a uh, a ballroom bar fight. Um, it uh, it's it's not going to be pretty. It, there's going to be a lot of Dylan Sampson running the football. There's going to be a lot of uh, hard hitting, late hits, a lot of personal fouls. I'm just I just feel like it's going to be chippy, um, and and I think you're going to get both teams playing very very hard, and they're going to be very very focused. Um, the problem with Vanderbilt is. There's no way Tennessee's going to overlook them because if Tennessee loses this game, they're not in the college football playoffs. Um, Tennessee is the better team in every position group, on maybe outside of the quarterback. Uh, Diego Pauly, I would probably take him over Nico, honestly. He's that good quarterback, and only because Diego Pauly is so experienced uh, and Nico is so young. Um, but outside of that, I would give Tennessee the edge in everything else. Tennessee's the better team. Uh, and the thing with Vanderbilt, too, is they don't even have a home field advantage in this game. Uh, it, I, I expect this to be 75 to 80 percent Tennessee fans in Nashville this week. So Vanderbilt does not have any kind of home field advantage this week. Um, I predict that Dylan Sampson's going to have about 150 yards. You're going to see him get the ball 20, 20 plus times easy carrying. He may get it 25 plus times. Um, Nico needs to hit a couple deep balls. He needs that's the one thing I'm worried about. He needs to be able to at least connect on a couple big throws because if he's overthrowing people and putting us in long and distant situations, then you know we could have an interesting ball game. I am a firm believer in Diego Pavia and his ability to rise up in big games uh, and um, 
and have the ability to beat us this week. But I think at the end of the day, our front seven is just too much for Vanderbilt. Um, I think James Pierce is going to be all over him. I think Arian Carter will be a spy on Pavia. Uh, and I think we limit Vanderbilt. I don't think they're going to score a lot of points. Um, I think I do think they, they score a couple touchdowns, but I think Tennessee covers the spread. And I think they beat Vanderbilt 27-14 to in a very hard-fought win in which Tennessee is going to advance to the college football playoffs and wait and see who we play next. But anyway, guys, that is my breakdown of the Tennessee-Vanderbilt game, and I will talk to you guys next time. Talk to you later.